Look at him over there. I don't like him. What do you mean? Just look at him. He's fat. More drink. It's not... No, he's not fat. He, yes, he is. He's maybe, he's maybe had a couple too many beers in his life. He's not fat. No, he's fat. Not fat. Look at him. He's not fat. He doesn't need to sit here and drink beer all night. Why does he need to sit here and drink beer? Where's no he one go? does. Home to his wife. Maybe he doesn't have a wife. He Who know. cares? He can go home to himself. More drink. Such a jerk sometimes. Look at him. What? Just look. Kick, kill yourself. Hey. Kill yourself. Hey. He's probably already entertaining those He can't hear about. us. Look at him. He's, how do you know he's deaf? And that hair. The hair? What is wrong with the hair? He's all slicked back and greasy. It's disgusting. It's better than your hair. No, my hair's great. It's better than your hair. Yeah, you got, look at that beard and mustache. What's wrong with the beard and mustache? He needs to clean up a little bit. That's what's up with the beard and mustache. Maybe it's not full in the cheeks, but you know what? It's not a bad beard. It's and not he's, a bad... And he's fat. It's not fat. Drink! No. No no more beer. There. You get that. You're getting fat, okay? Kill yourself. It's not even spicy. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here with you today for another Reader's Review. What is it today, Dalton? Uh, we will be doing A Clean, Well-Lighted Place by Ernest Hemingway. So, to start things off, did you have a favorite quote from the piece? I do, actually. I, I picked one out. Let me grab this here. I know exactly where it is. Are you ready for this one? Yes. Last week he tried to commit suicide, one waiter said. Why? He was in despair. What about? Nothing. That's good. Uh, maybe I'm just bleak and depressive, yes. but I thought it was absolutely wonderful. And It's a very Hemingway quote. It is. It absolutely is. This is mine. Okay. He stays up because he likes it. He's lonely. I'm not lonely. I have a wife waiting in bed for me. He had a wife once, too. A wife would be no good to him now. You can't tell. He might be better with a wife. Hmm. I think that that, that uh, showcases a lot of the dynamic that's at play in this piece. I think they both showcase the fact that this is a horribly depressing piece. Yeah, well, I, it's Hemingway. It's, it's so bleak. Yeah, there's... Uh, uh. <laughs> so where do you want to start? Um, I, I think, uh, really, uh, we could talk about that this is a Hemingway piece. This holds all the quintessential elements of Hemingway. It is bleak. Right. Uh, in my opinion, it feels like just a scene. It's just like you're just popping in the cafe and you witness this happen. Uh, there's no major buildup. There's no major backstory. This is just it. Right. Uh, you have drinking. You have suicide. Uh, you have a man's life. There is a lot made of the shadows on him mm -hmm. uh, from the leaves. And I think that's... That's indicative of uh, the short, happy life of Francis McComber, right? Okay, okay. The lion, the lion and the tall grass. Lion yeah, and the tall grass. That's another thing that pops up throughout Hemingway, the lion and the tall grass. And that seems to be the case. A lot of Hemingway's more well-known short stories seem to have this running common theme. Um, and that's the thing. They're completely different, but they still have common elements together. Right, right, So maybe right. that's just Hemingway's voice, or maybe that's what makes them so great. I don't know. Yeah, um, another thing that Hemingway is great at is dealing with the differences that age makes on a character, okay. right? Um, at all stages of career, uh, he was very good at showing the differences between a young man and an old man, a child and a middle-aged man. Okay. Um, how did you feel about that in this piece? Well, there are the three different characters. There's the young waiter, right. the old waiter, right. and then the old man. And yeah, they are all at different points in their lives. And I, I think it would be safe to say that through the progression, the older waiter may have won, once been the young waiter. Right. The old man could have been both of the waiters at one point in his life. Well, I think they're all three Ernest Hemingway. And um, without doing too much research on when this was written, you know, Hemingway, young Hemingway ran off to war. Mm -hmm. uh, very... Um, not very, very motivated, not very patient, right? Um, Middle-aged Hemingway, lost a couple wives, uh, 
was dealing with his career, uh, was probably starting a drinking problem rather than hobby, uh, and old Hemingway obviously was very suicidal. So it's easy to see all three of these characters as Hemingway at some point. And I actually noted that. Uh, I feel the old man in the cafe, that was Hemingway. Uh, that is exactly him, sitting there, just reflecting, alone. It's very dark, contemplating suicide. Right. That feels to me like Hemingway, but I think the argument could be made that all three of these men could be Hemingway. That's a really great point. I like it. Well, there's that interesting mechanism, too, where the middle-aged waiter at the beginning of the story is complaining with the younger waiter. Mm -hmm. At the end of the story, he's the guy who stays in the bar. Yeah. Right? So that's, that's the progression of the one character throughout the piece. Which brings up another point. Whose story is a clean, well-lighted place? And I, I think immediately well, you want to go towards the old man. Well, but here's the thing. The young waiter, um, okay, the old man forces the piece to happen, yes. right? Without the old man, this is just another night at work. Yes. The young waiter um, is, is the prime mover. The young waiter uh, drives the story. The old man forces it, young waiter drives it, but it is the middle-aged waiter who we end with. It is the middle-aged waiter um, who we get a stream of consciousness from, right? Okay. You get no one else's stream of consciousness throughout the piece. And maybe that, that, that is the intent, because if you look at it that way, then this could be the crossroads for the middle-aged waiter. I mean, right. he's going towards becoming the old man, reflecting in his life, and I believe that's a, a very pertinent part of life, is either you're happy with your decisions at that point, or you're disappointed in the choices you've made. But on the other hand, he's still looking at that youth. He's still wanting to get out of there, but he's at that crossroads. He could be both characters. Right. Um, or all three, mm -hmm. right? I mean, or you're talking about the middle-aged waiter, right? Middle-aged waiter, Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing that, that this story, more than most Hemingway, makes me think of is irreducible rascality. Have you ever heard of that? I have not. Um, the law of irreducible rascality, uh, the theory of irreducible rascality, uh, I'm not sure exactly how it's referred to, really. Um, and actually, if you want to be super offended, um, somewhere in the foxhole that is YouTube, there's a video of Noam Chomsky um, just tearing apart feminist theory, <laughs> where he says, uh, what does he say? The people in the math building all have their theories, and we want to believe we're just as smart as them, so we call our stuff theories too, something like that. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a theory, a law, a rule, whatever. Okay. But irreducible rascality basically states that all of the negatives to a person are what makes the positives to that person essential. So with Hemingway, what, why this makes me think of it is you look at Hemingway and he, he shot himself at 67, I believe, born in 1899. I think he shot himself in 1966, okay. something like that. If I'm, if I'm wrong, crucify me. Um, so you look at his body of work in that 66 years, 67 years-ish, and completely game-changing, right? Completely revolutionary. And you wonder, wow, I mean, if this guy had lived to 80, say, let's tack 15 years onto his life. Say in the last 15 years of his life, he wrote one short story a year and a novel every five years, something like that. You look at his body of work and think, what could it be with 15 more short stories and three more novels? If this guy just hadn't taken a sawed off into his mouth, pulled the trigger, right? But the law of irreducible rascality says, without that guy who would shoot himself in the face with a double barrel, you don't have the writer. Um, it is the negative of Hemingway which necessitates what Hemingway was, was known as, became. If he had not been that young waiter who ran off to war, he would never have been um, the young-ish writer who revolutionized English literature. And I think that's something interesting to play with, especially with Hemingway. Mm -hmm. It is the negative which necessitated the positives. Without, without all of the bads, he would not have been the writer that he was. And if you look at Hemingway as a person, I, I think 
maybe he was making that point. Uh, he was the man who says, you know, I, he's always talking about writing being such a lonely life, such a tragic life. There is no person lonelier than the writer, but the suicide, something like that? Something like that. So, yeah, he is blissfully aware of his character and his demeanor, and maybe that's necessary to be Hemingway, to write like Hemingway. Yeah. And I, I don't know, you, you poke a bear so much, eventually it's going to bite back. Right. So maybe this is just him finally, everything compressing in, and him just getting the words out. I, this is this is it. And I think that that's, that's what plays into his hard-boiled style. Mm -hmm. The fact that he wrote so much and then took so much of it out. Yeah. Right. And I think with that style, though, it's... This piece is very short, very brief. Um, we didn't comment at all about the story itself, just how you know, the progression of what it was about, because you can read it in 15 minutes. Tops. It's nothing. So definitely go out, give this a read, pause it now if you have to, go read about it. It's so easy to pick up and read. In fact, most of Hemingway... You know, we both have l literature degrees, mm -hmm. and there's so much literature on the Hemingway pieces when you're looking at academic literature. Um, and a lot of times, those academic pieces take multiples of the time to read that the pieces do. Yes. Right? It's it, very refined. Right. It, it's just, it flows. And it's so easy to sit down and read this, but there's still so much from it. It's one of those ones that really lingers with you. It gets in the back of your head and it gets you really thinking, which is what good writing should do. Right. But this this is a prime example of that. This really makes you think about these characters and you feel like you were just sitting at that cafe in the corner watching this all unfold. So how did you feel about the little stream of consciousness at the end where he sort of replaces all of the holy words in these prayers with nada? Where did you go with that? What did that mean to you? I don't think it really meant a lot to me. I mean, I maybe I just glazed over that part. Uh, that wasn't an important part to me. How would you feel about it? I, I think that that's where, th that's another crossroads for this character because this character is still, um, Hemingway, a lot of the quotes you read from him makes him sound like he turned to atheism later in life. Okay. Um, and perhaps he was that way in, in shades throughout his life. Um, but when you read that part, he's saying these, these sort of prayers-ish, and he's replacing holy words with, with nada. Um, let me see here. Or nada who art in nada, nada be thy, thy Nada be thy name, thy kingdom nada, thy will be nada in nada as it is in nada. He is still young enough to hold on to those prayers, but he is becoming disillusioned enough to alter them towards something which is nada. Okay. Right? And that's the thing. Maybe I just glazed over it and I just saw this guy essentially just rambling. And maybe he was just fed up with the night. But I mean, I, I, I didn't get that effect from that reading, so that's very interesting. Well, and that's, that's the beauty of Hemingway, right? I mean, if you had not been... You glazed over it, didn't even think about that part, because you were probably still thinking about, uh, we are two different kinds. The older waiter said he was now dressed to go home, right? You were still thinking about that while you were reading Our Father Who Art in Nada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's part of the depth that Hemingway plays into. Each time you read it, you will pick up on something else because of uh, these fragments of thoughts that we had been, that we had carried into our reading. Right, And, I mean, looking at the old man, can we fault him for his decisions? I mean, pulling away the whole religious aspect, saying, you know, the well, God, no God. Can we fault this man for his decisions to contemplate suicide? We don't know why. We have no, well, I mean... But I think what's really interesting is this, and maybe this is, again, Hemingway projecting. He seems to have a good life. He seems to have once uh, had a wife at one point. He has money that's brought up. At one point, his cup is literally overflowing. Right. There's symbolism there that's pointing to this man has everything that you would typically think would be a good life. 
but he's still in despair. Right. Everything that you would typically place on a good life. Yes. Without living that good life. Yes. If you were to sit down and make a list of, you know, what, what, is, what is the good life? So again, to get back to that, look at Hemingway. Successful writing career. Right. He's living the dream at this point. He's out hunting. He's out drinking. Cult hero. He is a war hero. It's a several war hero. He's loved. Right. He's had everything, but that despair is still there. So maybe this is uh, this is Hemingway's plea. You know, I I wasn't planning on going into this, but um, that's what I'm here for. Just yeah. to that side <laughs> note. Let's just throw everything out the window. You, you know, it's interesting though that that movie that came out with Will Smith, Concussion. Okay, I haven't about, seen it. I haven't seen it either, but I know what it's about. Yes. Following football, right? All of these. Uh, warriors who were in the modern coliseum that is the nfl um end up shooting themselves end up driving their cars off bridges end up killing themselves in all these different ways because they cannot explain their suicidal thoughts right and it, it, it's very bleak and it's very depressing and very difficult to talk about for some people very difficult but that's what it is there's some kind of disconnect go ahead right but but um it is nearly impossible to look at the life that Hemingway led and not imagine that he suffered several concussions throughout his life. Um, he, he got in a plane wreck in Africa and the, the plane was on fire. Have you heard this story? And he burnt himself quite well, the arms. Yeah, well, he, he uh, I think there's a picture of him with like yeah. just toasted arms. To, to get out of the plane, apparently, his, the, the pilot, I think, was unconscious. Uh, his wife was like in and out of consciousness. He could not shove up against the door hard enough. He had to open it by smashing his head into it, mm. right? That, I mean, that sounds more dramatic than football injuries, right? Yes, yes. Um, so maybe there is a, a medical explanation for this a style of thought. Right. But again, if that was not brought into the story, this is just an old man, perhaps he's in not quite there, age has got to him. Right. But the whole suicide aspect is pulled out, I think you lose a major part of this story. Oh, you, uh, it's, you, you lose the, the it's young... Necessary. The young man is the action. Yes. Uh, the the middle aged waiter is the plot, but the old man is the heart of the story. Like that's where the feelings come from in the story. I agree. Story. So yeah, absolutely. And, uh, so yeah, if you don't have that, you don't have anything in this piece. You don't have anything in it. You, you don't have the piece because the conversation never happens. Yeah. So, moving on, what would you uh, what would you grade this short story? I like this short story. I really do. Um, I've said before previously, Hills Like White Elephants is one of my favorite Hemingway short stories that I've encountered so far. Okay. I haven't read the entire collection that I know some people have. Yes. I'd give it a 90. It's a great story. It's thought-provoking. It moves. It's not flawless. But I think it's almost impossible to find that flawless piece. Well, I, I don't know if it's fair to say that it's not flawless. What are the flaws? <laughs> Way to call me out on it. I can't identify a flaw. See, and that's why that I rated it a 93 out of 100 because um, I think that it is game-changing but not life-changing. Okay. It is a story that is going to change the way you read. It is not a story that is going to transcend the page and change the way you live. Okay. Um, so like for it. me, so for me, that that 93 out of 100 says, you know, I don't know any flaws in this piece, but reading it. I can tell that there is something which could be better. Borderline perfection. Sure, borderline perfection. It is, um, going back to football, let's say a quarterback is 10 for 10, throws 10 passes, completes them all, but he doesn't throw a touchdown, yep. right? All, all 10 of those passes were just five yard dink and dunks. Yep. That's still, that's still, that's a flawless, that's a flawless performance. But it's missing something. It is missing something. Okay. Uh, what would you guys rate uh, Clean, Well-Lighted Place by Hemingway? What was your favorite line from the story? Make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, below. Don't miss another week of this. Uh, we have videos coming out about every day now. We have a Twitter, at Strip Cover. We have a Facebook, at Strip Cover Lit. And we have an Instagram, which... Instagram, instant, you old bam, Instagram, what strip is? cover lit. 
Uh, give us a follow on everything and keep up with our antics. So just how instant is this gram? It is very instant. It is an Instagram. Mesh it together. Wow, you, you don't even get the last two letters. Exactly.